प्लीज सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल नॉलेज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर फॉर लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड स्मार्टफोन वीडियो आईफोन ए प्लस वर्सेस आईफोन 10R speed test look at those reds just shine they're so fiery red let's go ahead and begin with a boot up test in three two one and see which one can get there first the iphone 8 plus with the apple a11 bionic chipset and a little bit better but definitely a lot better in graphics the a12 bionic chipset over here both do have three gigabytes of ram so no advantages to either there so we just did the 7 plus and the 7 plus beat the 10r in the boot up and so does the iphone 8 plus which also beats the 10R significantly here on the boot up test. So nice stuff here for the iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, so quickly testing Touch ID versus Face ID. You could see Touch ID just very fast here for the iPhone 8 Plus. Although not quite as secure as Face ID, it is very reliable, quick, and efficient for most users. So I do like Touch ID still, even though it's no longer gonna exist on new iPhones. There you go, let's check out Face ID. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out Face ID, three, two, one. You can see there it goes again, three, two, one, and there it goes. Now to get into this fast, all you have to do is start swiping right away and it will go in a little bit quicker. So it's pretty fast as well and it recognizes you in both dark and light and you can authenticate applications with this one just like you could with Touch ID, although it feels a little more modern on the 10R, Touch ID is still a little faster, more reliable, but more security features for the Face ID. It's just a little more secure than Touch ID. Not that anybody was asking for more, but it's there. For the iphone 10r okay guys so we've arrived at the application speed test portion of this video you can see the iphone 8 plus everything closed out on the right same thing i do want to mention really quickly that when you do go into the toggles the iphone 8 plus is a little bit faster here because that haptic feedback is just not as fast let's go ahead and get into calendar three two one and you can see that one to the 10r slightly let's go into the calculators three two one and you could see pretty equal performance what about clock you could see almost identical once again, Snapchat. You could see that goes to the iPhone 10R. What about WhatsApp? And you could see that's the iPhone 10R. Let's go into Instagram. And you could see Instagram is a win for the right. Let's go ahead and hit the profile page. And pretty similar stuff here overall. Let's go into YouTube. And you can see YouTube is a win for the 10R as well. Let's go into trending and you could see Pretty similar stuff here overall. Let's go into Prime Video and check this out. And Prime Video goes to the A+, but overall it's seeming like there's not much of a difference in performance. So if you wanted that older iPhone feel with modern performance, the A+, is still a compelling option for you. You can see the 10R with the win there over the A+, and we can go into eBay now, and you can see there goes the iPhone 10R again over the A+, the screen's a little yellow. I think I have True Tone on right here. And let's go ahead and come out of here now. And let's go into Slither, three, two, one. Gaming performance should be significantly better for the 10R as the GPU is much better. And I've noticed that it just has a better battery life. When gaming, it doesn't get as warm. It's a little more efficient. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride. And you could see, look at how fast this loads here on both devices. It's just incredible the speed you're getting on either phone, it's kind of ridiculous. It's probably more than you'll ever need so far, at least. You might need it in three years, but today it doesn't seem like you really need it. So if you hit play, they both go into dead trigger a very similar time, but the 10R for the win there on that one slightly. Let's go into speedtest.net. You can see the 10R with a little bit better performance there. Video shop, you could see again slightly to the 10R. Let's go into iMovie. And this one's going again slightly to the 10R. And what about Safari? You could see again, pretty close performance on both. So I'm calling them a pretty close tie. It's, I mean, the 10R won some of the applications, so you can technically say it was winning, but this is gonna vary depending on the Wi-Fi, how fast it's going on either phone. Maybe that's why the 10R was winning. And also in the day-to-day, -day, you're really not gonna see much of a difference, even if a couple apps were like a millisecond faster here for the 10R over the 8 plus let's test multitasking now quickly going through the 8 plus let's see if we get any reloads here for the device and nothing so far looking good it's going to whatsapp what about instagram nothing youtube nothing prime video looks like it stuttered a bit there for the 8 plus actually that was an ad so we're not going to call that a stutter for the 8 plus ebay let's go into slither and let's go into jetpack joyride 
dead trigger and let's go into speed test that looked like it reloaded a little bit let's go into the video shop let's go into iMovie and let's finish it out with Safari so not bad it's pretty good RAM management there 48 plus what about the 10R you can see the gesture kind of just makes the phone feel smoother than that of the 8 plus so that's a nice touch for the 10R going into YouTube going into Prime Video I think this one also is going to give us an ad here yeah, so that was just an ad. It wasn't really a reload for Prime Video. Not getting much here to speak of on the 10R so far. Jetpack Joyride, Dead Trigger 2 Pause the same way. And nothing here for Speedtest.net, Video Shop, iMovie. iMovie with a slight reload here for the 10R and Safari. So I'm calling with that three gigs of RAM, it's gonna be a pretty similar RAM management experience on both devices. Okay, so quickly on the video rendering, we do have a 35 or 36 second 4K clip. I upped it from the last video as the 7 Plus beat the 10R. I thought that was a little shocking. So let's see if the same thing happens here for the 8 Plus versus the 10R on the 4K. So and hit 4K and they're gonna export these. I'm gonna speed them up until they actually finish the render. I'll be back when they're done. Okay, so the iPhone XR did win here in the video rendering portion over the 8 Plus, so it might have been just because it was a shorter clip. I don't know what happened with the 7 Plus in the last one, but the iPhone 8 Plus was pretty close. So I think even if you're doing video rendering, neither one of them is like going to be that big of a deal. They're both going to do it pretty competently well, but the 10R, if you want more power, definitely ahead of the iPhone 8 Plus, and I think it's even ahead of the 7 Plus. The 7 Plus is one because it's probably a shorter video so the 10r wins here for the video rendering okay so here we are with the final geekbench scores and unlike the iphone 7 plus which got its booty kicked in the last video this one is ahead but not by a significant margin in the multi-core yes it's ahead by quite a bit and it's ahead a lot more in terms of the gpu performance but in real world use, this doesn't really make too much of a difference. But if you want the better Geekbench scores, of course, the iPhone XR, it's almost 5,000 on the single core. That's insane. So that's it. Between the iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone XR speed test, we've seen here that the 8 Plus can easily hold its own against the iPhone XR. The 8 Plus is definitely the slightly slower phone. But if you want to know which one is the better phone to buy overall in terms of value, check out my video I did last Sunday on the iPhone 10R versus the iPhone 8 Plus, which to buy. I will leave a link down below or up here in the card. And thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoying in any way, shape, and form, click that like button for me. And if